Welcome to The Miracle You, guiding you on the journey towards finding passion and purpose and how to discover, create, and live a life by your design. Whether your success has been plentiful or your missed opportunities have been overwhelming, we can help you become a more empowered, masterful person and show you how to share your gift with the world. It's time to inspire change from within with the host of The Miracle You, Vince Kramer. Hello, imagination. I'm Vince Kramer, your host, and welcome to The Miracle You, where you learn about the magic of living your life by finding the example in real life. You know, over the last year or so, many people have been asking me, why imagine miracles? Why are you interested in seeing people find and live their your, your unique purpose? And, and the answer is each one of us is so special in the fact that we have this combination of gifts and talents that no one else has. And we find joy and we find excitement in those things that are really about us. When I say about us, it's those things that we enjoy doing. It's the things that we're good at. Today's guest is going to share what he's good at and what he enjoys doing. And many of us would look at his life and think, wow, that is so much out of the the ordinary for what I would think would be an exciting job, or I, I don't see how he can enjoy doing what he does. But it's because of who he is. It's because of the background that he has. It's because that he has learned that he brings something special to the world. And as a financial planner, it's not about the money that he brings to the world. It's about his ability to teach. It's about his ability to research. And more importantly, it's about his ability to answer questions. You know, he's like me. He's an answer man. And when you ask Mike a question, he's there for you to be able to share with you you know, his knowledge plus the information that he can find through his research. Well, that's what I want for people. That's what I want for you. I want you to find that set of unique gifts and talents. I want you to find that process that only you bring to the world to bring those gifts and talents to the people around you and the people, more importantly, that are looking for you. And then I want you to, to be able to share that and share your mission, your divine intent, that reason, that purpose that you came to this earth. So I'm excited to, to bring Mike to you. So I'm with Mike Frost today, and Mike is a financial planner, a researcher, a family man, a father, somebody who really cares about people. And Mike brings to the world his special and unique abilities to look at numbers, to look at our demographics, to look at the past, to look at what's happening in the government, to really dissect what's going on in the world, and then bringing that to the understanding of why our financial markets are performing the way they are, to bring unique understanding to each one of his clients on how the world is affecting what they would consider the rest of their lives when they're looking at their retirement. And Mike did this because he found through a wake-up call in 1987 that there was more to life than being the Wall Street guru to being the trader that was making all the money. And he realized that life savings are important. Retirements are important to people. And if somebody cares enough, then you can hold on to that retirement and hopefully use your retirement instead of worrying, as Mike puts it, the lower scale of the Maslow's hierarchy and needs and worry about survival and really start to become self-actualized and serve the world with your special gifts and talent like Mike shares his. Mike Frost, are you ready to share the miracle of you with the imagination? I am, Vince. I am. I'm ready. 
Uh, it's so good to have you here, my friend. Uh, Mike and I have been friends for for quite a while now, and and Mike's actually experienced some of the Imagine Miracles program as as well as guided me on my financial path over the last uh, oh, oh wow twenty years, Mike at least, huh? Yeah. That's uh, pretty scary for me to think about uh, being 60 years old. We look a little different than when we did when we first started. Much more attractive, I think. Yeah. Well, Mike, you know, the, the bio says a lot about you and kind of who you are professionally, but could you give us a little bit more idea of, of who Mike Frost is and, and really how you've been making a difference in people's lives? My mission is to teach as many people as I can about how the world works. And uh, a lot of that is I kind of specialize in, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? So I kind of specialize in the bottom part of that. You know, people if people aren't feeling safe and secure, they're not going to really worry about the top part of that graph. And, and uh, they're not going to really worry about, uh, how to fulfill themselves and things like that with other things. And so when people come to me, a lot of times they don't understand how the world works and they don't understand why people are so upset in the world in certain periods of times. And and a lot of this can be explained with uh, a lot of tools that we use, mostly demographics. And a lot of this stuff, a lot of the discourse that we have can be tracked down 30 years ago with just baby births and, and the number of births. And so I try to help people explain to them or try to explain to people why the world works the way it does using those tools. And that is my gift. And that is what I'm good at. And uh, I do that better than anybody else I know. So now for those of you that are listening to the, the podcast, you can tell Mike and I have been hanging out together for for the last 20 plus years. My gift, my mission, that's what I'm good at. That's what I enjoy doing. Uh, boy, you, you, you're, you're nailing the, your unique purpose, Mike. So thank you for, for sharing that information. You know, what, what is your biggest joy that you get out of, of helping you know, not just retirees, because I know you do a lot of work with retirees and their finances, but what, you know, what brings your, you the biggest joy in, in your job? You know, when somebody comes in and I, first of all, have the best job of anybody I know because I've known people for 20 years. They come in here and a lot of times I know more about them and their family than their siblings do or, or their pastor does or or anybody in the neighborhood does. And, and I know about what their dreams are and what their hopes are and what their aspirations are. I know about a knucklehead kid on the fringe or, or a, a, you know, somebody who needs help in their family. And, and they trust me with that information. So that part is really cool. But the thing that I can help them with is to understand, again, why things happen the way they do. Some people will come on in and say, boy, the world's a mess. Uh, we look at Brexit, for instance, and why are those people so mad? Why do they want to get? A, well, again, a lot of that is predetermined by just demographics. Uh, a lot of people uh, wonder why millennials are so uh, so different, and that's because you know they they're growing up in an age where they're told they're not going to get Social Security. Uh, you can't be a capitalist if you have no capital. They have no capital. Uh, if you bought land in the 70s and 80s, uh, the old rule of thumb was buy as big a house as you can, as you can afford, and it'll grow in value and you'll make a lot of money. And a lot of people who were born at the right time in, in the history of the United States made a lot of money just because they were born at the right time and happened to live at the right place. Today, the millennials don't have that kind of shot. With this declining demographics, it's going to be very difficult for them to make money in things like real estate uh, because the, the age, the baby boomers are declining. They spend less. And so what I help people do is understand that the world is changing. It's not going to be like it was 10, 15 years ago. People come in and say, you know, I hate the fact that the, the that there's globalization. What does that mean? Well, you know, in 1880, the world had uh, everybody was sick and poor, and and technology doubled every 200 years. 
Today, it's doubling every two and a half years. And so somebody living in India, sitting on a peach crate with no TV, they all have a cell phone and they're all seeing how the rest of the world's living and technology's double in every two and a half years. So they can get the education, they can get the free flow of exchange of ideas. And so they're bound to catch up with their standard of living. It's not that we're doing worse, it's just that they're doing better. And my job is to show folks, you know, how the world is working and why it's better, not worse. You know, Mike, um, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here a little bit. So, you know, these beliefs that we've held on to for such a long, long time, um, obviously, like you say, with globalization and, and other things that are happening in our society, in our world, you know, our, our beliefs kind of have to change with that. How, how do you use that kind of work in, in what you're doing in the financial world? Well, that's a great question because a lot of people who believe that what's happened over the last 30 years is going to happen over the next 30 years, it's just not true. If you take a look at um, my business today, you know, a lot of uh, uh, people in this business say, well, you, you just keep your money fully invested and buy on the dips and all that. That has worked great in that last 30 year period. But if you look at places like in Japan, one in six homes is vacant right now. And that just means that their demographics are changing. 30 years from now, they're going to have one in three homes is going to be vacant. In Italy right now, they're giving away homes for a dollar. If you want to move to Italy, if you stay in that city for a dollar, you can have that. If you stay in that city for five years, you can stay there. And so, again, the people who, who thought that this is the way life was supposed to be, I'm going to retire and have Social Security because I was promised it. They're not going to get what they were promised. And people who think that they're going to get all of the entitlements that they thought of, uh, if you're retired and living in Chicago, Illinois, the pension in the state of Illinois is not going to be what you were promised. Uh, the state of Colorado is only 60% funded on Colorado public employee retirement. You're probably not going to get what you were promised whether it's cost of living adjustments or whether it's the same amount, something's going to change. And so my job is to, uh, again, get people to think out of the box differently. Things are changing. The world's changing. If you think like people did in 1980, buy the biggest house you can afford and it'll go up, you're in for a big awakening and, and you know, some financial disaster down the road. So you've got to think differently. Mike, you know, have you felt this way about money and finances and people your entire life? No, you know, uh, remember the movie Wall Street with Gorman Gecko, you know, Michael Douglas. Is, so in 1987, that movie came out. I wanted to be just like Gorman Gecko, you know, as greedy and as selfish as he was. Uh, I love the fact that he was making money. And I lived in New York in, in 1987 when the stock market dropped. 23% one day. And that was kind of my life changing event. At that point, I wanted, I saw a lot of folks who I knew and really loved kind of uh, blown away by that. And a lot of them, you know, never got back into the stock market or had their life savings, you know, reduced a bunch and were totally scared and it changed their whole outlook on, on investing in life in a lot of ways. And, um, at that point, I kind of turned over from being, you know, greedy. I want to be just like those guys to, you know, maybe there's a higher purpose in life and I got to find out what happened. And then once I found out what happened and how it happened, and I keep seeing how it changes. My job is to educate as many people as I can because that is coming again. And I do not want to see these people that I really love and care about hurting. I'm going to do as much as I can to get the word out there to fix that. So I've changed a lot uh, since 19, you know, 1980s. So would you say the uh, the stock market crash of, of 87 was a wake up call for you then? It was. And there have been a couple of times since then, you know, 1987, of course, got it started. And I wanted to learn everything I could and just read every book I could on finances. And prior to 1987, the Federal Reserve was never on my radar or uh, demographics was never on my radar. But as I kept reading all of these different books, it became more apparent to me what's important, what isn't. 9-11 um, 
like you, Vince, was devastating and, uh, you know, a game changer for me too. And, and, uh, it changed a lot of people's lives and it changed a lot of how financials work and, and it changed a lot about how, you know, our country worked too. So that's another thing. And, and they're constantly things that are changing. Uh, 2007 was another life changing thing when the federal reserve, uh, basically went too far and created, you know, a lot of crisis. And of course the banking system didn't help it as, as well. So that was another thing. So I could, I could probably say four or five things. My dad owned a savings and loan in, in 1980s uh, and 1990 when the savings and loan fiasco hit, you know, he lost everything. And, and uh, that was one thing that he always said to me was, you know, can't hurt us. You know, we're backed by real estate and we work with the government. You know, how can we get hurt? And so, again, there, there are a number of different things that have happened in my life that have created me to think, okay, what happened here? Why did this happen? And I just, just delved into it and tried to figure out what happened. You know, they say the rules are made to be broken, but really, honestly, you know, rules are just uh, what's accepted by the uh, the general populace and and the rules that we have are the ones that we move forward with so as you said there's so many especially in the financial world the the rules have changed and they're continuously changing in those wake up calls mike how did it change your personal life you know it when my dad's business went under it changed everything for my mom uh, she lost all control of, you know, her finances and things like that. And it really scared her. And she, well, she's had a tough time since then. And, and uh, my dad was always a good guy. He didn't let it bother him as much. And so I learned how to kind of take those ups and downs a little bit. Um, but certainly whenever one of those things happen, you go into a mode where you sit and reflect and learn as much as you can and read everything that you can. And if you don't, then... You're at the mercy of, of people that don't have your best interest at heart. And, you know, the more you learn, sometimes the more skeptical you become, uh, like insider trading and computer trading. And do we ever have a chance on stuff like that? But again, if you can prepare yourself and, and educate yourself, that's the best thing that you can do, whether it's educating yourself for um, how to improve your life or your life expectancy or um to your finance, it comes into everything. Anything that I've had a big change in life with, whether it was a, a kid wanting to play baseball and I read all the books on coaching baseball, you know, that I could to help them out. You know, it's always something like that. Education is always the key. Learning as much as you can. That's excellent advice. H have you experienced any miracles in your life? Yeah, I've, you know, all the time. Could you share one or two with us? Sure. I, I guess the biggest one, you know, is living in New York and I thought I'd be absolutely, this is kind of hokey because everybody says it's marriage or kids, but, you know, I, I really thought uh, that I would be some Wall Street trader somewhere for the rest of my life and just live a life like, um, well, the, the guys on Wall Street. And uh, I um, found my wife, I was transferred to Colorado Springs, met her, uh, and that sounds hokey, but uh, she was very much in the family, very much in the kids, and I can remember um, there are a number of guys that I've talked to over the years, and, and one is a guy by the name of Jim Rogers, who is a big hedge fund on, he ran a big hedge fund on Wall Street, he almost bankrupt uh, Great Britain, and he would talk about traveling across uh, Australia on a motorcycle and he retired at 40 and he did, you know, travel all over. And he'd always say, why does anybody want to get married? There's so many things to do in the world. Why does anybody ever want to have kids? Well, he got married and had kids in his late sixties. And he said, it changed everything. And I think when I met my wife and had, you know, first kid, it totally changed everything. And it was really a miracle because you go from worried about yourself to service for others. And that's where I found true happiness. And, and I think true happiness for, for me is service to others. And, and you don't, you don't experience that unless you have a miracle. You know, that's uh, very interesting. Uh, Mary and I were talking about that earlier today about, 
how important service is for us to feel um, wanted and needed in the in the world. But on the same note, uh, in being in service, you you really open the door for so many people. And and I know that um, your oldest is wanting to follow in dad's footsteps. So you're you're setting uh, some amazing examples, and and uh, your open heart is is really giving uh, direction to your children. So um, it, it's, I'm glad that you found that miracle. And uh, I'm sure that there's so many more miracles to come because of that. I'm hoping so too. I'm hoping a couple kids join me and we teach more and more folks about life and what's going on. And, and uh, I hope we can spread the word. And, and they're just a lot of fun to, to work with. And, and Vince, you're the perfect teacher and you know what it's like instead of just dictating to people what to do, how much fun it is to teach people what's going on. And, and uh, so I'm sure you share that same joy. I'm sure. That- oh, the, the magic of example, Mike, is, is so powerful. As you know, our definition of miracle is through an act of love, sharing your gifts and talents with the world so others can share theirs. And it's very interesting. You know, I'm, going to put you out there on the end of the limb again one more time. You know, I I personally would like to see more people when they get to the retirement age to to realize that their life isn't over. It's really truly just beginning and they have so much to share with the world. Can you give me an example how you're sharing the miracle of you with the world? It's, It's really through education. This used to be a way to make money. And I had come from a a family of educators. And so when I talk to people and they want to know, you know, what what to think of of the world today and and why it is better than what they think and and how the world works, it's a comforting thing. People come in here and say, boy, you know, I'm I'm like if we're just talking about investments, they'll come in and say, well, whatever company set me up in this portfolio optimization modeling, and they think this is the way it's gone for 30 years, and I'm 100% invested in U.S. stocks and bonds and blah, 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 and, and they don't understand why things work. And so many people, I read an article the other day about, <coughs> excuse me, about why Apple's so successful, and Dell has kind of floundered a little bit here. And one of it is because Dell asks, how do we fix things? How do we make a computer? How do we make it cheaper? Apple asked the question, why? Why would somebody want this? Why would? And so my biggest thing to to share with people is why do things work the way they do? It's not necessarily, you know, how do they do it? Um, How should they be invested? But why they should be invested the way they are? And in return, I get a lot of of people uh, who are good friends now are telling me, like you, Vince, you know, why do I want a life of purpose? Why, do, you know, instead of just here's the cookie cutter idea of how to do it, here's the menu, here's the ingredients, um, you know, why is a big, big, why is the best question you could ask anybody? And, and that's, uh, that's what makes me feel good about helping people is explaining why instead of just boom, here, how, how it works. What's your why? I love, I love to tell people, give people the answers. And the reason why I love that is because so few people know the answers. There's so much ignorance in in the world. And when I say there's ignorance in the world, when people say, why are we so polarized politically? And the answer is you can hide a lot of, the answer to why is we, you can hide a lot of warts when your demographics are great and everything's, everybody's making money. But when the demographics change, people start pointing fingers. And if you understand why, then you're not so upset. You're not so upset at immigration. You're not so upset at, at um, you know, how things work uh, the way they do because you understand why they're working the way they do. And you become a lot more at peace and you can move up those steps to the hierarchy of needs. You don't have to be so worried about safety and security. And a lot of folks who, who retire, uh, once they retire, no, they're never going to be able to make that kind of money again. And so they want to know not necessarily how are they going to make it, but why are they going to make it too? Because they think, like I do too, 
things can change. The rules can change. And why are they going to be different doing something like this versus how are they going to be different, uh, you know, based on a modern portfolio optimization model kind of thing. So why is a, uh, uh, awesome question. And my why is, uh, to teach people, um, why things are and boy, giving them the answers to the test is, is the absolute best thing that, that I do. Excellent. You know, I, di- I just took a note here, you know, why really opens the doors for you to understand that, that the rules aren't necessarily real. And, uh, that's that was a, a very good explanation that you, that you went through there. Once once you have a little bit of knowledge, or even better, a lot of knowledge, now you can look at those things and reasons that you're living a certain way or making decisions for a certain way, and, and realize that you know maybe that did come from a two year old or a five year old in in its perception of life. And and now when you start looking at things a little more rationally, uh, you know, the the rules might not apply to us. And and once we start building our, our lives by our own rules, you know, there there's no end to that. So thank you for, yeah, for sharing. You, you said it, you summed it up perfect. What's the best advice you ever got, Mike? Um well best advice would probably be um well, I got a couple of them here for you. Pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work, and that's a big deal. My grandma had a whole bunch of sayings and things that she did, and and she said if you like what you, if you love what you do, you never have to work a day in your life. That kind of thing, and finding the right, finding who you are and what the right spot is, is a huge thing. And I love that quote from grandma, and you know that's what I'm living. And when I say work, or when I say you know, pleasure in the job puts perfection in the work. It also applies to marriage. It also applies to kids. It also applies to, you know, other family things. So that's an awesome quote for me. And one, and grandma also had another one, tough times don't last, tough people do. In this business, there are tough times. There's going to be tough times. And so you got to be kind of tough if, if, if you're going to be doing what I do. So grandma was awesome for that. <laughs> Let's hear it for Grandma. Yeah. Well, share one of your personal beliefs that contributes to your happiness, health, or abundance. For me, Tony Robbins is uh, you know somebody I followed in the 1980s, and how he got started in high school. He said, "I read one book a day," and I thought that was pretty awesome. You know, he has no formal education or anything. And for me, it's learn as much as you can and love as much as you can. Those two things are uh, imperative. I, I was reading uh, a couple books on longevity, and they're out there talking about, you know, is it the, uh, the diet of, uh, you know, the uh, Italians, or is it, um, you know, exercise, or is it just genetics? And about a third of it, from what I understand right now, is just the ability to love and the ability to have a community. And and, uh, that's such a big deal, too. So you throw those personal beliefs, learning as much as you can. Don't be ignorant. Uh, As my mom used to say, don't be ignorant. And then uh, certainly love as much as you can, too. And life goes a lot better. You know, imagination, that's something very important. And I know many of you have heard it before, but when we start talking about energy streams and and resonating energies, there can't be any fear where there's love. So if you're loving as much as you can, now you're eliminating fear from your life. And with the elimination of fear, now there's opportunities to go well beyond and step into the unknown in ways that that you can't even imagine yet. So uh, let's uh, let's hold that and and uh, take that belief into the world. Each and every one of us love as much as we can. Mike, um, I I don't have a lot of financial people on the podcast, so this is this is a question that I have to ask. Can you recommend a book and share why you recommend it? I got two for you. One is if you don't know anything about demographics or if you'd like to learn a little bit more how the world is 
There's a guy by the name of Hans Roslin, R-O-S-L-I-N-G, and he wrote a book called Factfulness. And that's on Bill Gates's must-read list. And it's one of the most important books to ever read. And it's all about demographics. And it's not just about financials either. And then Hans Roslin has a website that you can go to where you can find all sorts of things about how people are living and why life has changed and why he's so optimistic about the world. And and I agree with a lot of that. And then the second book is uh, one that I just started picking up and reading. Um, and it was all about uh, how to live longer. And they did a study uh, in Italy about, uh, you know, how people live longer. And they found that there's a town of centurions who all basically – uh, think like they have uh, uh, the same diet. They were trying to figure out what makes these folks live longer. And it's all that they have a sense of community. They love each other. There's a lot of uh, positive energy in there. Uh, and they found out that that's just as important as, you know, how much you work out and, and what kind of foods you eat and having a sense of purpose. If you're doing all the right things as far as eating right and and, uh, you know, working out once in a while, if you don't have that sense of purpose or that love, and they, they call it love in this book, it's called Undo It by Dean Ornish. She's a MD, and, and uh, that's uh, one of the most important books. If you're going to find out about what's important in life, you know, to live longer and happier, that's a great book to get. Boy, you tied it all together. If you want to live longer, love more. <laughs> that's that's a perfect well, perfect set of advice there for for sure. And your book is up the list too. You got to got to read Vince's book. You know, and you and you really need to look at the fact that when when Mike talks about purpose, we we really came to this world for a certain reason and when you start finding that reason and you start living it, and it doesn't mean you're going to change jobs, you might stay in the same job, but you're bringing more of yourself to the world and, and, and through that changing people's lives. Now, all of a sudden, age really doesn't matter as much. When, you, when you've got that higher vibration of the joy that you feel when you're being yourself and being accepted in your communities for being yourself, like the centurions are for sure, um, that really opens things up. Mike, it is amazing to spend this time with you. I appreciate your insights and, and sharing so much with the imagination. Could you give us one parting piece of guidance to help us on our way? I would... Vince, I've known you for so long, and you talk about all the important things, and you talk about why things are. Anybody that could spend any time with Vince, it's time well spent. That's my advice. If you're looking, if you've got the, if you've got the security stuff down, and you're ready for the hierarchy of needs, and find out what's really important in life, any any time you can spend with Vince, whether it's on a webcast or on his website or whatever, it's it's time well spent. Thank you. And, and I'll promise the imagination. I didn't pay Mike for, for that endorsement at all, but we've had some. No, he didn't. <laughs> we've had some really deep conversations. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, we had a men's group, and uh, the group was just spectacular. And one of the neat things about it, even when I'm feeling a little down, everybody's willing to point out this or something better. And Mike shared that with me the other day when we were talking about uh, my father's impending um, death because of uh, terminal cancer. So when Mike says surround yourself with good community, uh, he really knows what he's talking about. And, and I appreciate him and my community. Mike, how could people get a hold of you if they want to know a little bit more about what you do or about who you are? Well, there's a, there's a website called frostfinancialgroup.com. And, uh, you know, it, there's all sorts of links to Hans Roslin and demographics and things like that. And, uh, but you know, the reason, uh, that I really wanted to do the podcast, Vince, is because, you know, uh, I just want to make sure people understand who you are and how appreciative I am of you. And, and you are the answer to the question, why do you want to, why do you want to be better later on in life? And, and I, you know, one of the things I would have loved to do earlier in life is to get more involved in that kind of stuff. But with 
all the kids and all the baseball practices and everything else, everybody has an excuse of time. Um, but, uh, again, um, if people can spend some time with you on your website, your podcast, uh, that answers the reason why, uh, you want to be better because you're going to be happier, live longer, be better. Well, thank you very much, Mike. And it was such a pleasure to have you on today. On behalf of Mary and myself, we want to wish you a miracle day. Thanks, Vince. You too. Take care, my friend. Thank you. You've completed this episode of The Miracle You, but we have plenty more to help you discover your own personal passion and purpose. Head over to TheMiracleYou.com for free resources to assist you on your journey, as well as register for our free webinar, Discover Your Miracle Life, Three Mind Awakening Steps Toward Your Unique Purpose, or apply for a one-on-one Your Life, Your Way breakthrough session and discover your next best step on your journey. All available exclusively on our website. That's TheMiracleYou.com. We look forward to sharing more experiences of passion, purpose, and life by design next time, right here on The Miracle You.